Hello 3D printing friends! Today on the BB3D channel we'll learn how to install Creality's BL Touch Bed Leveling Kit on the Ender 3 V2 3D printer. Stick around and we'll get into it right after this. I'm Brian and you are watching BB3D. Hi, welcome back. Hey, if you're new here and you're wanting to learn about 3D printing, 3D modeling, and other 3D printing related stuff, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Okay, so today we're going to find out how to install Creality's BL Touch Bed Probe Kit on the Ender 3 V2. And thanks to Creality for sending this to me to try out. This kit actually works on several Creality printers if they have the V422 or the V427 mainboard installed. These are 32 bit mainboards with a 5-pin connector specifically for installing the BL Touch. Here, these are the printers the instructions say the kit works with. The Ender 3 series, the Ender 5, 5S or 5 Pro, the CR10, and the Ender 6 with no rack. And no, I have no idea what that means. Now, not every printer listed actually shipped with the 422 or 427 board. More recent Ender 3 series printers have them, but older ones don't. And for those printers, the boards are offered as user installable upgrades, so it'll be necessary to remove the cover of the electronics enclosure to verify the board you've got before you order this specific kit. So what is this BL Touch thing anyway? Well, it's a bed leveling probe that touches the bed to sense where the surface of it is. The firmware in the printer probes the bed at nine points in a three by three grid and uses this information to know if the bed is higher or lower at certain points. It contains a magnetically deployed pin, and when it's time to probe the bed, the pin extends from the body of the probe. As the pin contacts the bed, it's pressed upward into the probe, and at a certain point, a magnet captures it and pulls it quickly back into the probe's body, and the probe is triggered. This differs from inductive bed probes, which sense the metal underlying the print surface, but the metal and the actual print surface don't always match up. For instance, you might print on a glass surface. Well, inductive probes see right through that. If the glass is flat, but the metal print bed dips down a little bit in the center, the printer will think that the glass has a dip in the center too. Now in practice, inductive bed leveling generally works great, and it doesn't have any moving parts that could break. But if you change print surfaces often and their different thicknesses, you have to adjust the Z offset on your printer to accommodate that. Some printers let you store different values that you can select from to make that easier. With a touch-based bed probe, it always senses the actual print surface, so you can change print surfaces and the printer always detects the actual surface that it's going to print on. Now the drawback to a touch probe is that the probe tip is a moving part and moving parts can break. So, Here's what comes in the kit. You get the BL Touch probe, the connection cable which connects the probe to the printer's main board without the need for an adapter. You get three different brackets, and the one that you use depends on which printer you're installing this on. You get screws to mount the probe to the bracket and the bracket to the printer. You get zip ties to secure the cable to the outside of the cable bundle that goes from the main board to the print head, and you get a spare probe tip. Now that you know what's in the kit, let's see what's involved in installing this on the Ender 3 V2. I'll go over this in detail, but the basic steps are update the printer's firmware, mount the probe, and connect the cable. Coincidentally, I recently released a video covering the firmware update process, so you can either jump to that right over here or finish watching this video and then use the link in the description to go over to that video. Now, since I'm doing this on my Ender 3 V2 and from the previous video, I know that this printer has Creality's 422 board installed. The firmware file that I need to download is this one, which is the one for the Ender 3 V2 with a 422 board and a BL Touch kit without an adapter. So I'm going to kind of blast through the firmware update process here. And again, the detailed firmware update is in a video linked in the description. I'll take that .bin firmware file that I downloaded copy it to a blank micro SD card, put that in the printer, and turn the printer on. The printer sees the firmware file on the card and updates itself. When it's done, I'll turn the printer off and unplug it. So that takes care of step one. Next, I need to plug the probe side of the cable into the BL Touch. Now this is the smaller of the two connectors on the cable. It plugs in here. It's keyed, so it should only go in one way. 
This has to be done now because it'll be difficult to get to the probe's connector once it's mounted on the printer. Then, with the cable connected, I can mount the BL Touch probe to the correct bracket. This is the one for the Ender 3 V2. The instructions say there are two M3x6 screws and two M3x8 screws, but my kit has four M3x6 screws, so I'll use two of them to mount the probe to the bracket. According to the pictures in the instruction sheet, the probe should be mounted so that the connector side of the probe faces the fan shroud. So with the probe on the bracket, it's time to mount the bracket to the X carriage. There should be a pair of holes here for the express purpose of mounting this bracket, but early versions of the Ender 3 V2 do not have the holes. I know because I have a very early version of the Ender 3 V2 and hey, guess what? It doesn't have these holes. And as a result, I'm installing this on a newer Ender 3 V2. Now, I don't know what Creality's position on this is. If you buy the kit and it doesn't have the mounting holes, will they send you a replacement X carriage that does? I would hope so, but I don't know. If they did, it would probably take a month to arrive, so if you find yourself in that unfortunate situation and you're the slightest bit handy with tools, you might just want to drill and tap those holes yourself. So, since this printer does have the required mounting holes, I'll use the other two screws to attach the bracket to the X carriage. And that's it for step two. Step three is securing the cable and connecting the other end of it to the main board. I'll use the included zip ties for this to hold the BL Touches cable to the existing cable bundle that goes back to the main board. I would prefer to have this cable inside the cable sleeve, but that can be a little bit of a challenge. In the interest of brevity and following the instruction sheet, I'm doing the zip tie thing. I'll clip off the extra zip tie bits later. It's not pretty, but it works. And for the plugging in part, I'm going to need to access the main board inside the electronics enclosure. I'll remove the one screw on the top and the three screws on the bottom of the enclosure and carefully set the cover aside. I'll plug the five pin connector into the BL Touch port here. It's keyed and it has a locking tab, so it only goes in one way. Well, it only goes in one way easily. If you want to put it in backwards, it probably takes a bit more force. The cable needs to route out of the box here with the other cables. And be careful, because the edges of the aluminum can be sharp. So not only can you accidentally cut yourself, you could accidentally cut into the cables. So now I'll reinstall the cover. Now remember, the long screw goes in the back on the bottom. So now that the BL Touch probe is installed, it's time to actually make use of the new probe and the new firmware. Now, since I installed the BL Touch firmware on the printer, the ZN stop switch is no longer being used. So I'm going to remove it and I'll just tuck the connector in here. Oh, watch this. With the BL Touch, when you select Auto Home, the X and Y axes home as usual, but then the printer moves them to position the nozzle over the center of the bed. Then the nozzle moves toward the bed to home the Z axis, and when the probe triggers, it backs up and then comes back down again slowly to get a more accurate reading. Now, when homing the Z axis, it probes the center of the bed because if X and Y stayed at zero, the probe wouldn't be over the bed's surface and then it wouldn't trigger and then the nozzle would crash into the bed. So don't freak out when the bed and the nozzle move from their usual home positions immediately after they home. And also, once the Z-axis is homed, it moves up 10 millimeters because reasons? I don't know why. Okay, so now that the printer is homed, I need to set the Z offset value. That's the distance between the probe's trigger point and the nozzle. See, the probe has to trigger before the nozzle gets to the bed, and we need to figure out how far the nozzle is from the bed when that occurs. Then the printer can use that value, so when we tell the printer to put the Z-axis at the zero point, it actually brings the nozzle down to the bed. Now I'm going to ignore the instruction sheet about setting the Z offset for the probe because the instructions don't apply to this printer. They're for an Ender 3 Pro, not an Ender 3 V2, and the user interface is different, so these instructions won't work. Actually, I couldn't find any official instructions for setting the BL Touch Z offset on Creality sites, so here's what I was able to come up with after a bit of trial and error. First, I'm going to heat the bed to 60 degrees Celsius because that's what I normally have it set at when I print. When things heat up, they expand, so I want the bed at operating temperature and operating size before probing. Then, when it's been at temperature for a few minutes, I'll home the printer. So remember earlier I said the nozzle moves up 10 millimeters after it homes? 
Yeah, it just did that. So I need to move it down to zero, and that's in prepare move and move Z. I'll set it to zero. So now that it's moved, I can see how far away from the bed it really is when it thinks it's all the way down. And it looks like it's a good two or three millimeters away from the bed. So I'm going to adjust the Z offset, or as the screen says, Z offest. It's clearly a typo, but I'll deal with it. That's in prepare and Z offest. I'm going to set it to negative 2.00. I'm using a negative value because I want to pull the nozzle down toward the bed. Now, sometimes when I do this, the z-axis moves. Sometimes it moves up and sometimes it moves down. So since I can't trust that it's actually moved two millimeters closer to the bed, I'm going to home the printer again with auto home. And then I'm going to move z to zero again. And then I'm going to perform another visual inspection and yeah, the nozzle's closer, but it's still a little far from the bed. So I'll set the Z offset to a more negative number, and then I'm going to home the printer again, and then I'm going to move Z to zero, and then I'm going to check the nozzle's distance from the bed, and I'm going to keep doing this until I get the nozzle to where a piece of paper is lightly pinched between the nozzle and the bed. And the result is that for my printer, the Z offset value is negative 2.70 millimeters. So great, now that's done. Now, I do want to address something that was brought up in the comments on my Ender 3 V2 Creality Farmer update video last week. And that is this. When you set things like Z offset values or acceleration values or other stuff from the screen, and you save the configuration using the storage configuration menu item, Creality's firmware does not store these settings on the main board. Instead, the settings are written to a file on the card. So, if you print with multiple cards, you'll probably need to make sure you set and save the Z offset value on each card that you're going to use in the printer. I guess this could also pose a problem if you move the same card between multiple Ender 3 V2s. The settings stay with the card, not with the printer. So until Creality releases firmware that stores the settings on the main board, I'll just have to be careful with my cards. Or I'll have to compile Vanilla Marlin 2 for the Ender 3 V2, but that's not happening today. So, printing with a bed probe is a little different than you might be used to. I like having it probe the bed before every print. So, if I change print surfaces, I don't have to do anything special. So, to make that happen, there's really only one thing that needs to change, and that's the G-code command for homing the printer at the start of a print. Now, this is shown here in the instructions. They're showing it for the Creality Slicer, which is Cura, but the change is the same for a Prusa slicer or any other slicer where you can adjust the starting G-code. Right after the line with G28, you'll add a line with G29. G28 is the G-code command to home all three axes, and G29 is the command to probe the bed. So from this point on, any file that you slice will have the correct commands in the starting G-code. Files that you sliced prior to this won't, obviously, so they won't probe the bed before they print. So you might want to re-slice any older files if you want to reprint them. So I'll slice and print a quick leveling squares model just to make sure that everything's working. This is something that I made in Tinkercad. It's just five 30 millimeter squares, one layer high. So it homes and it probes and then it prints the squares. Ideally, each square should have a good surface finish and if you need to, you can tweak the Z offset from the tune menu. These look like they're printing pretty well. And they're done. And that looks pretty good to me. Ooh, smooth. Okay, so is a bed probe really necessary on a printer the size of the Ender 3 V2? Well, personally, I've been able to get the bed height adjusted pretty much right where I want it most of the time. The glass print surface that came with it is pretty darn flat. Now, I've got other similarly sized printers where the bed dips a little in the middle and some where it bows up a little in the middle and a BL Touch probe is perfect for that situation. It can sense the slight difference in height across the surface of the bed. And then when the printer is printing, it can keep the nozzle at the right distance from the bed on each layer. Having a BL Touch also allows you to change print surfaces. So if I wanted to remove the glass print surface and make my friend 3D Printing Llama happy by joining Team Blue Tape, I wouldn't have to make any adjustments to anything because the probe can feel where the print surface is. So I guess the answer is, on this particular printer owned by me, it's not strictly necessary, but it's convenient to have. On printers where the bed isn't super flat, I think it could help. 
Now there is something to be aware of with the BL Touch. When you first turn on the printer, the probe performs a self-test, deploying and retracting the probe pin a couple of times. If the probe is too close to the bed when it does this, the probe pin doesn't fully deploy and the BL Touch gets angry and blinks red. The quick fix for this is to raise the Z-axis a little bit, either by turning the lead screw or using the control panel and then turning the printer off and on again. Also, be aware that probing adds a little under two minutes to the start of each print, but given how long 3D prints usually take, I don't think that's a big issue. I've also noticed something weird. Every once in a while during probing, the BL Touch gets blinking red angry, and I don't know why. When this happens, the printer stops probing the bed prematurely and then just goes ahead and prints anyway. I kind of think it should stop and say something, but it doesn't. I tried capturing this on video, but after starting 10 prints in a row with the camera rolling and not having a failure, <laughs> I gave up. Now, the couple of times that it did happen, I caught it out of the corner of my eye, and so I still don't know what caused it to do that. Now, also, the instruction sheet directs you to go to creality.com download to get files, but there's nothing there specific to the Ender 3 V2 with the BL Touch. I went to creality3dofficial.com slash download instead and worked my way down to the Ender 3 V2 section to get the necessary firmware files. The instruction sheet also says to scan the provided QR code for detailed instructions, but doing that took me to a landing page that didn't really help. I also searched the support forum on creality3dofficial.com and there wasn't anything specific to setting the Z offset on the Ender 3 V2 so the process that I used in this video is one that I came up with on my own. So, Creality, if you're watching, could you please fix the firmware so it saves the settings on the main board and also make the printer stop if the BL Touch errors out before it finishes probing the bed? Also, Live Z Adjust would be an awesome addition, making it super easy to get the Z offset set while printing. And accurate installation and usage instructions specific to each printer supported by this kit would be great. So overall, I like the BL Touch on the Ender 3 V2. The installation is easy, and although it doesn't look pretty, if you wanted to take the time, you could feed the ribbon cable for the BL Touch through the cable sleeves and make it look like it was factory installed. I'd like to thank Creality again for sending this to me to show to you, and if you'd like to take a look at it on their site, there's a link in the description. Well, 3D printing friends, that's about all the time we have for this episode. And now that we're at the end, let's level up and go print something cool. Hey, real quick before you go, I wanted to say thanks for being one of the super awesome people who sticks around all the way to the end. And thanks for all the likes, comments, and shares. And an especially big thanks to those who directly support what I do. You're all wonderful for doing that, and I really appreciate it. If you liked this episode, a thumbs up would be great. And if you'd like to help support the channel, Check the description for ways you can do exactly that. And hey, if you haven't already subscribed, please do. It's absolutely free and it's an excellent way to help keep me making these videos for you. Well, that's it for this one. Thanks again and I'll see you next time here on the BB3D channel.